In 2002, one of the most important artifacts of U.S. naval history was pulled up from the floor of the Atlantic Ocean near Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. The gun turret of the USS Monitor had sat untouched since New Year's Eve 1862, and now it would be resurrected and moved to America's National Maritime Museum in Newport News, Virginia. It was March 8, 1862, and the Confederate ironclad, the CSS Virginia, also known as the Merrimack, methodically dismantled the Union's wooden naval fleet one ship at a time. There was no stopping this technologically superior warship, and soon the Atlantic coast would belong to the Confederate States of America. This was the Battle of Hampton Roads, and soon naval warfare would be changed forever. On March 8, the Confederate ironclad Virginia was wreaking havoc on the Union blockading fleet in the harbor. They actually caused so much damage that it was the worst loss of life for the U.S. Navy prior to Pearl Harbor. So a massive, massive engagement on March 8. With nightfall and fog buying the Union time, the unstoppable ironclad, the Virginia, was forced to wait till morning. Then as the sun rose, it steamed to its next target, the great wooden warship, the USS Minnesota, which stood defenseless. They wanted to sink also the Minnesota. But before that could all happen, the USS Monitor entered the picture. Arriving at literally the nick of time to save the Minnesota and the remaining fleets came the odd-looking Union ironclad, the USS Monitor, a secret weapon few knew about, including the crew of the Virginia. And now the two ironclads slugged it out, locked in cannonball after cannonball at each other. For over four hours, they engaged essentially at point-blank range in brutal combat, just firing iron cannonballs into the iron armor, um, you know, about as close as we are right now, just fighting it out. And although it was considered a draw by most historians, it proved that ironclad technology was really the future of all naval warfare, and so that really set the benchmark in advancing naval technology. This was really the beginning of the modern navy, the modern fleets, the iron ships, and they were completely iron. And so the name ironclad. These were basically the nuclear subs of the 19th century, so technically superior that they immediately made wood-sided warships obsolete. The Mariner's Museum salutes their place in history. So tell me, what is this thing right here? This is actually a full-size replica of Monitor's revolving gun turret. So when the crew of the Monitor was firing, the gun would actually come outside of the gun turret, fire at the Virginia, the Confederate ironclad, and then it would recoil back into the turret. So it's a neat protected structure. Okay, and what would this thing be right this here? This is another gun port. There were two of them, so the cannon sat side by side, and there was actually a shutter on the inside that would open or close to allow the guns to come in and out. That way the crew was always protected. The actual gun turret is preserved inside of the museum, along with one of its huge guns. It's, it's unbelievable what we have here. When the archaeologists went to the wreck site and recovered the revolving gun turret back in 2002, they brought up the turret, but it was filled with archaeological sediment from the ocean. So as we worked on it at the museum and as we worked with the archaeologist and we removed the sediment layer by layer by layer, we discovered many artifacts. And that includes things you'd expect, like the big cannons that were on, on the inside, the gun carriages, but even more personal items like um, silverware with sailors' initials inscribed on them, personal items like um, keys, coins, pocket knives, pencils, and even two sets of human remains. So essentially, the the wreck site was its own archaeological site, and it was brought to the museum where we finished that work. Believe it or not, this is actually the hull of the USS Monitor, and it's one of many pieces that are being restored that will be used as an expansion of the museum. And not far from the Monitor exhibit is a display which pays tribute to its bitter rival, the Virginia. Well, now we're inside of what would have been the CSS Virginia, and you know what? This is not very big, Chris. Well, it's, it's an illusion because this is just the front section of the original ship. The original ship was 262 feet long. There's been some misconception in time because some people thought that the Monitor battle, battled the Merrimack. Well, it did, sort of. The Virginia itself was built from parts of the Merrimack. The Merrimack was a steam frigate in the United States Navy. It was in the Navy Yard for repairs when the Confederates took the Navy Yard, okay? 
And the Confederates wanting to build an ironclad and wanting it to do it quickly said, why not do something that's ready made? So our grade school history books were correct. The Monitor did indeed battle the Merrimack, which is also referred to as the Virginia. And as for the fate of the two ships? The Virginia actually was kind of surrounded on land and by water, so rather than risk being captured, they ran the ship aground, set fire to it, and it exploded. So that was just a, a month or two after the battle. The Monitor was actually on its way down to North Carolina and South Carolina, being towed by another vessel when it sank in a storm off the coast of Hatteras. So believe it or not, these two famous vessels actually had a very short lifespan. However, their legacy will continue to live forever right off the James River in Newport News, Virginia at the Mariners Museum. When we come back, how you can get involved with this show and why we welcome it. Life to the Max continues after this. Life to the Max is brought to you by LifeTouch. Photography for a lifetime.